We got another episode of the Part of the Culture podcast. I'm here with T, the legend. How you doing? What's good with you, bro, bro? So, why they call you T? Let's let's start there. Ah, uh, man, you gonna make him, make me give him my government, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, my real name is Tavion, so that's where T um, stemmed from. But growing up, my mom, my dad, grandparents, everybody called me T. Um, the only people that ever called me Tavion was probably a teacher or a couple of um, my peers in school, but you know, for yeah. the most part, it was always T. T, that's uh, what's up. Uh, so, uh, T and I have, I've helped him with a couple of his sweatshirts, a couple of t-shirts, we're doing some sweats and stuff right now for his brand. Um, and before we even talk about it, T's a, a highly successful barber and he's branched off into so many other things. And so today I just really wanted to make the, the after getting his history and things like that, the, the top of, of conversation is make it double. T has taken his barber career and he's used it to create multiple streams of income. Um, I know that he obviously makes money from cutting hair. I know that he does uh, different shows. I know that he has different courses and things that he does and day sessions where he teaches people. So from one career, he's able to make multiple streams of income. I've done the same thing with my clothing business from starting with shirts to branching off into other things to branching off into teaching. So, you know, we're going to get his history, but the main thing is we're going to talk about how he went from just a barber to making it all double. Let's talk about it. Cool. So let's give him a little bit of history. So um, I, I actually listened to another podcast, so I got to hear your story a little bit. But for those people who don't know, how'd you get into the to the barber business? Uh, the barber business um, to me came basically second nature. Um, my mom is a hairstylist. My dad okay. was a barber growing up. So it's just something I was around my whole life. I grew up in the shop, you know, no after school. You know, daycare, none of that. I was in the shop, man, full yeah. time. <laughs> wow. That's how it is. That's how it is. Yeah. And so I know, uh, where are you from originally? I'm from uh, Florida, Central Florida, uh, Polk County. Haines City to be exact, which is about uh, 20 minutes stretch from Orlando. Okay. So 25 minutes. Something That's like cool. That. Yeah. That's cool. So I think, really, my first question, man, is I see you as a barber, and I see a lot of barbers doing their thing, but I feel like, like you got a little bit of success behind you. What's the one thing that you feel is separating you from other barbers that your peers and things like that all love? Obviously, everybody, we all out here trying to grind and eat. But what do you think your your secret sauce is? Um, I, I would have to say the secret sauce, man, is basically me just always trying to apply pressure. Um, I feel like, you know, the average person who, who, who works a full time job gives about 50 to 75 percent of that. Yeah, I believe in. 110 percent yeah and i'm trying to squeeze every single avenue out of my industry that i can so i feel it yeah. i feel it who gave you that mindset did you wake up and just kind of like i want it i seen some or was your pops in your ear or eric thomas or some or <laughs> so know? my dad my dad was always in my ear definitely in a good way um my mom was always in my ear too so i got um a lot of game from them at an early age but I would say a lot of people don't know this. Um, I was a barber 10 years before I moved to California. So, oh, wow. So, and I was just tired of, you know, I was that barber that was just that barber. I had yeah. just that income and nothing else. So, when I came here, of course, um, got around the right people. Uh, one of my mentors, that Dave, you know Dave. Yeah. He kind of shout out to Dave. gave me a, a different perspective on the hair hustle. Yeah. You know? And I just took that, you know, what I learned from him and the things I wanted, man. I just put my own spin on it, man. For and, sure. And just ran with it. What's some of the what's some of the tidbits that Dave kind of laced you with? Obviously, hanging out with somebody and, and being around them and, and putting in that daily work is I, really this formula, but what's some of the things that he got in your ear about? Uh, he got in my ear majorly about the, the business aspect of it. Okay. As far as, okay, um, and it's and the hard work too, but yeah. Um, from a business aspect, you know, um, when I moved here, I was getting like seventeen dollars a haircut. So, okay. Um, one of the things he taught me was to always, um, you know, know my worth. Yeah. Um, and you know, project what I'm worth into the atmosphere. So okay, you know, I went from about seventeen, eighteen dollars a haircut instantly yeah. to being in his shop. I mean, that my first day, I had uh, a client give me $80 for a bald head. Oh, wow. So that, you know, 
his business model was always setting the standard. Yeah. And uh, with the Bartman platform, you know, it was 15 guys and everyone was elite. Yeah. You know, it was just at that time, four years ago, it was just the space to where that was the number, the number one um, thing that the Barbers Inc. stood for was just, you know, the value of the shop. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, shout out to Dave, man. I met Dave, uh, I bartend, and so I was bartending at Chacho's, and Dave, me and him started talking. That's actually how I originally met him. Mm -hmm. um, and Dave, he told me, he's like, he's like, I'm definitely trying to, I'm definitely trying to, um, set myself apart. He's like, I do shows. He's like, I take it very serious. He's yeah. like, I go out and I'm trying to empower the people. Yeah. I'm trying to do certain things, but yeah. he definitely had a, a dope little work ethic. It's cool that he that he, he helped put you on, man. Yeah, yeah. so I just want to touch, um, right, real quick, like you just said, um, yeah, he, he basically taught me, you know, barbering, you know, which he told me I was already good at, but yeah. he showed me the aspect of getting checks yeah. from barbering. So That's what's up, yeah. I respect that. Yeah. So I see, I see. So you know, we talk about barber. You're an amazing barber. First and foremost, if you in San Jose, you need to go get hit up by T for sure. But T has taken his brand, and can you just break down some of your income streams right now? Um, yeah, that's crazy. That's 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 the second time I did a phone interview earlier. Uh, me and Zach was in the car, and uh, the lady Sarah she asked me the same exact thing. Uh, break down my income streams. So first. We have barbering, of course. That's yeah. one. Um, stemming off from the barbering, we have the hair products. Okay. So not just the hair products, we have the merch too. So that's okay. three. Yeah. Then from there, I do the uh, luxury car rental. Okay. So um, that's four. Uh, what else, that? Do you do and you go on? Did you say you do the tours and stuff? You teach people. Oh yes. About yes, hair. Yes. So so. Um, Major events like last year the Super Bowl, the National Championship, uh, the CFP NCAA National Championship. Not this year because of COVID, but yeah. for the last two years, you know, doing those large events, uh, working with athletes, uh, celebrities, sports figures, and things like that. Um, I kind of put that all under barber too. Yeah. But, um, here recently, I started digging into um, during the pandemic credit. Uh, business credit, funding, personal credit, because when when all this stuff started being taken away from us, yeah, I kind of thought about the only thing that we have to fall back on if everything else is gone will all be will always be your personal credit. And yeah, if you true. had personal credit, then you could go out and get that business funded for sure. So yeah, yeah. I've been uh, uh, creating a actually an ebook for uh, entrepreneurs. That's dope. Uh, barbers. Hairstylists, anybody in their own business about business funding, That's uh, dope. credit, personal credit, and stuff like that too. Yeah, I do. Um, so me, you know, only part of the culture. Some of my income streams, obviously, I do the. My main business is screen print and embroidery. So I can make shirts. I can do hats. Um, I can do. Uh, I do graphic design. So. I bought some stuff for you today too. I got some stuff. Okay, cool, cool. Making deals on the podcast. <laughs> um, but I do. I do that, and that was the first thing I ever did. And for a long time, I was like, "What is a business that I could do that runs congruent to my business? That's not like something just off the wall." You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. Selling pets or something. Right. So what I had, I kept searching and searching, and one day, um, his name is I can't think of his name, but he owns Project Life Mastery, and he talked about. You can not only get paid off of what you do, so I do shirts, you can also get paid off teaching people what you do. So now, so then I, I, it, a light bell went off and I started my information business. So from there, so for my screen print business, I would print shirts, make money, and then I started consulting other businesses on how am I getting clients, how am I, uh, uh, everything about my business, okay. sales, business, marketing, everything. And then as my business grew, I wrote my first book. I wrote a business book. Then I uh, wrote in a book on investing. And okay. so I did a, last year I did a fix and flip the real estate market in uh, Cali is crazy right now. Yeah. So it's, it's bananas. So I haven't found a good deal yet. But to touch on, I say all that to say, to touch on what you're saying, I had to learn about credit. So for my first deal, I had, uh, I put up 20 bands. Okay. And then I was able to secure another, um, 
15, 17 bands okay. from in in business credit. So I was able to go into the deal with like 37 nice. um, instead of just 20. So right. all based so, off of my credit. So if you knew nothing about business credit, if you knew nothing about credit at all, would that deal have went through for you? No. And but somebody put me on to say because she was because everything. If you know anything, like if you need a hundred thousand dollars to get in a deal, it don't matter where the hundred thousand dollars come from. Obviously, you have to know like what's your points and it's things like that. Come up with. But if you can come up with that hundred k, you can do a deal. And so my business partner, shout out to Krista, she said, "How's your credit?" And she's like, "Instead of you just being able to put your own money in, she's like the banks." And here's the kicker. Credit card companies will give you a year of uh, interest-free payments. So yep. if you can find a deal and, and do and a fix and flip takes three months. So I was able to secure the credit, $15,000 in credit. Okay. Um, I was able to secure the deal, uh, flip the deal, and pay off the credit cards interest-free. So it was, free, it was literally free money. Free money. You didn't even have to come out to And buy. so where people mess up is they use that credit to buy... Uh, what is it? Depreciating assets, they call it clothes, <laughs> and things Jewelry, like that. Yeah. Cars. So I was able to use it to do um, to uh, to invest in real estate, and we're talking the the episode is make it double. Right. So as what did I do also? So I did my fix and flip, okay. but I also I, I charged for a class to teach people how I did my first fix and so flip. You made it so up. yeah, so I had I had my class I made money from, yeah. and I did a, a twenty dollar course, yeah. and I think sixteen people came. So you guys can do the math. So that's that's um, that's something I forgot too. I want to stop you right. Yeah, now. go ahead. So. Um, so barbering, which is the nature of, you know, my main umbrella. Yeah. Um, February 21st, this Sunday, is my first uh, online course. Yes. That we're coming with. It's $99. Yes. And uh, I'm teaching um, barbers, hairstylists, uh, anyone who wants to, um, you know, learn the basics of barbering, um, you know, and I titled the class Mastering the Art of Fading because... A lot of barbers, and that's that's probably the hardest thing to do as a barber. Okay. Uh, Caesars, uh, scissor cuts, all that stuff is 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 not too intricate. It's fade, fading is very detailed. So okay. You got barbers who've been barbers for ten years and they still have lines in the fade. So okay. So that's the main thing we're going to uh, cover on the twenty first. And like you said, I think right now we got about twenty people signed up. So that's dope. That's a that's two thousand dollars on a Sunday. Yeah. So it back to make it double. He's a barber, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying this just so you guys can hear me talk. I'm saying this so that whatever you do, you can make multiple streams of income from what you do. We have his boy who's a photographer uh, in the background flip, taking flips. He makes money from photography. He makes money from marketing. He just took it and turned it into two levels. Then he could teach. He could throw a, a, a photography class. He has a studio right here. He can bring yeah. in five students and, and charge them $100 for a four four hour class yeah. and that's five hundred dollars that he can make in a day so there's real money in this if you are good at your craft if you take passion in your craft so the whole point of this is me and t came on here to give us give you guys some games so you can make whatever you do make it double you can make double from what you uh what you have man so i want to know a little bit more about make sure before i go on make sure you guys tap into that class if you have ever wanted to do hair and even this is the back end so i charge for classes but the thing that got me here that got me to be able to do interviews that helped me with real estate that helped me with business is i've paid for courses i paid a hundred dollars to 150 for a marketing course i paid i just paid 30 dollars for a um how to uh, sell on using facebook advertising me and my buddy yesterday were talking about how we paid i paid 67 dollars for a ty lopez course it was 67 bucks for 67 lessons it was a game changer um, the marketing thing was a game changer. I, I paid $72 for two to three months on how to uh, sell information because okay. I always sold physical products. So I had to learn how to sell digital products. Okay. So I paid for information. So any of you guys that hear like, oh, he's charging 99. Oh, he, you, we just said he has six streams of income. You pay $100 and you're getting access to a cat who has six streams of income. If you got six streams, okay, cool, maybe 99 might not be for you. But if you're sitting there broke and you don't have no clientele as a barber and you don't want to invest $100, I promise you nothing's going to change in your life until you take action and learn something new. Knowledge, they, in, the, in, the, in the Bible, they say knowledge is more valuable than uh, rubies or gold. And so don't ever forget that. That's true. That that ninety nine dollar investment, and this is what I've been telling everybody: you invest ninety nine dollars, but here's you you turn around, you enhance your fade game, your haircut game. 
you know, you also learn about barber etiquette. I'm teaching you how to attract celebrity uh, clientele. I'm teaching you how to um, model yourself to make six figures a year as a barber. So you invest that $99, you know, and you practice and you take this information and you go out and apply it. You know, I say 30, 60 days later, you, you're going to get those $100 clients. You know, you're going to excel and you're going to walk out of that, that uh, virtual class knowing more than you know walking in. My dad always told me you cannot be a great teacher without being a student. I'm going to give you guys a little more game because the whole thing is called make it double. You know what you could do? You could take the $100 course from T, learn a little bit, and then you could charge 20 bucks to what I learned from T course and what I learned on that weekend, and you can instantly start making money off of the knowledge. Right so, in your shop. You can start right in your shop. Right, yeah, right out the corner. So. I'm trying to give you a, a, a blueprint to how to make it double. There's so much money out here, but if you don't invest the $99, if you just, not even saying just on this course, any course, on anything, on a book, on anything, that's really where the game comes from. T came out here and got a mentor. So all of these things are really success principles. Bro, I'm still paying. <laughs> this is crazy, right? I, I support, I believe in support people so much when I believe in them. I'm still paying $19.99 to this day to uh, my mentor's app that he created for barbers and stylists five, six years ago. And I've been paying that for four or five years and I'm still paying it and I work next to him every day, so. Yeah, that's love too, support. Sometimes you just gotta support cats. Yeah. So, you know, we talked about, you know, I think everybody gets a clear idea of the make it double. You know, if you wanna learn more about the credit and things, definitely reach out to T. Um, how can people reach you, you know? Uh, I'm on social media, uh, all platforms. It's, uh, Instagram is, at T E E underscore D A Barber. Uh, that's probably the quickest response you'll get from me. I'm on Snapchat, YouTube, everything else is the same, but to get me fast, just hit me on IG, man. I'll definitely have all this information in the show notes. So let's talk about so um I have I'm starting to get into the rental business. So okay. I Teach have me so. So I have. How can uh, I make the real estate game double? So I have. So from real estate, <coughs> I did my first fix and flip, and then my mom and my stepdad they have a property in L.A. Okay. It was just sitting there. We just when we have we go out to L.A. We stay there, but I started. I was like, man, let me can I put it on air. I went there and it's old. It was kind of old and crusty. It was my great grandparents, and they haven't okay. changed anything. Okay. So imagine like it looked like it was like the sixties. <laughs> it was kind of creepy. Shout out to my my great grandparents. But. But I went there and I was starting to get hotels because I just wasn't feeling the vibe there anymore. Ooh. So I said, I was driving back to uh, back up to the Bay from LA mm -hmm. and I was like, I, I'm, put, I'm turning that into an Airbnb. I'm turning that into, because I after doing the fix and flip, I realized how easy it is to fix stuff up and okay. make it nice. So you just kind of told yourself that you was manifesting Yes. You know, you're speaking into existence mm. on your way home from LA. Yeah, I was just sick about it. I was like, I'm not going. I'm gonna make this so nice that not only will I want to stay there, but everybody's gonna want to okay, stay so, there. Okay, so so what was next? What did you do after that? I went. I hit my mom. I said, Hey, we need to. I did the math. I was like, You've been letting this sit here for for five years unattended. You said you wanted to be a, a property manager. I was like, You've okay. left two hundred thousand dollars on the table, mom. I was like, You care if I put it on Airbnb? She said, I was like, I'm just gonna take pictures and see if people will book it. Okay. I took pictures. Uh, I have a, um, I think I went back down there like two weeks later, literally specifically to put it back on uh, Airbnb. Okay. I took some pictures and then I threw it up. I have a, all the camera equipment from podcasting and stuff. Mm -hmm. I took some drone shots, some pictures, put it on Airbnb, forgot, and I just drove back home. That was my weekend. Drove okay. home. And I honestly forgot about it for like a day or two. Next day, people hit me like, oh, we want to take, we want to rent out your Airbnb. What? So, so then I told my mom like, hey, I'm ready. But my mom <laughs> is, um. She's like, she's better, much better now. I've been working with her and developing her as a hustler. Mm -hmm. But she was like, no, don't take them. No, don't take them. But before it was over, before it, it was like over, mom. I had turned down three racks. Uh -huh. And I was like, mom, I'm not going to keep turning. I was like, and I kept telling her numbers. I was like, you're, you just lost 200 bands and 3,000. I kept saying, say that number, mm -hmm. mom. Like, you're losing money. Right. I was like, you could have been, we could have been took this property and turned it into multiple properties. Right. So... I got her on board and we all went down there. We got camera systems, everything done um, and put it on. And so, but from that, I realized that there's actually, people will actually book it. So my buddy had an empty three bedroom condo 
uh, apartment in San Jose. Uh -oh. So I subleased it. I said, hey, I, I put my stuff on here. It was uh, hitting. And I subleased it. And so right now, I have a second Airbnb that I launched. And... Um, it's been it's been uh, it's been hitting. It, I, I, I'm not so in all transparency because of the pandemic. I just I'm not, I I have it priced at break even okay. because I started it when the when California shut down shut down. Ooh. So I had two cancellations in my first uh, week of people booked for the like the whatever they were gonna do and then they canceled because Cali got shut down. They're okay. coming from out of town. But then once um, then. A lady, her house was being fixed. She booked it for 45 days. Mm. So I got, so I got my first Airbnb money. Then um, I had a couple other guests now. So I've had it since December, and I've had, I've been, the San Jose one's been pretty fully booked the whole time. Okay. I added some. Uh, so if you go to mine, I have the actual Dave and Buster's basketball game. I got the NBA. You know what? I saw you with the NBA Jam. Yeah. The store. So that's my, that's okay. why I call it the trap house. That's okay. my Airbnb. I okay. have the NBA Jam in there. Remember we talked about it actually. Yep. Yep. I have the NBA Jam in there I have uh, the old school Pac-Man in there and then obviously like couches and uh, all the accessories I learned I have a cleaning service that comes through so I know the business now but I'm just gonna price it like my uh, mentor said uh, breaking even you don't lose money so right now I'm just breaking even on that project the LA house how I have it structured anytime someone books I get 30% so we put in a couple of bands to get the camera system but I have uh, my first guest uh, two weeks ago. Okay. So me and my mom, I got to send my mom her first little money, and then I have somebody checking in on the 11th nice. for a couple of days. My mom has a little bit stricter criteria than I have. She wants seven, three to seven days only. She's afraid of um, she's afraid of people squatters. Stay, squatters. Okay. So me, I'm just kind of you. If you want it for 45, keep it for 45. Right. You know, I'll go in there with a pistol if I have to. <laughs> um, that's, but, another <laughs> that's another story. That's another story. But um, so I'm not. But a lot of people have been super respectful, and it's been huge. Yeah. But make it double. I could charge for a course on how to run an Airbnb now. Right. I could teach and do different things, but it's just added to my brand. Right. And I, my goal is financial freedom. And if I can get, say, 10 Airbnb, I actually came up with a goal for my Airbnbs. I want an Airbnb. I got this from the uh, the 9 to 5 millionaire. I want an Airbnb for every one of my bills. Ooh. So I have a rent. I want an Airbnb that covers my rent. Okay. I have a cell phone. I want an Airbnb that covers my cell phone. Okay. I'm about to have a baby. I want an Airbnb that's just specifically going okay. to my baby. And then um, an Airbnb for, like, retirement. Because I don't have, I actually have shut down a lot of my expenses. My business kind of pays for their expenses okay. but me personally all I have is rent and I don't have no car payment or nothing right now nice, nice. so That's I want it. three to four Airbnbs car passively payment. Yeah, passive, <laughs> passively paying me. So that's all I would say is um, you don't have to, the game that I could give you is you don't have to own, uh, you don't have to own any property. If any of your homies hit you and say, oh, you know, I'm looking for a roommate or, oh, you know anybody looking for a spot? You can say, hey, what's it looking like? And if it's in downtown area, it's a nice thing. Let me get that. Yeah, you can say, hey, I, I'm trying to run an Airbnb business. Give yeah. me a three month lease. Let's right. see if it works. And then you can rent the furniture. I rented everything. Okay. I'm about to buy all the furniture for the, the San Jose quote unquote trap house. Nice. Um, and that would be my first larger investment. But for the first three months, I rented everything. Yeah. So then I just took all the pictures and seen if proof of concept worked. Right. So that so if, I, if I did it, then you could just return it. Yeah, I just had a three month lease. I would have lost, if it didn't work, I would have just lost a couple bands, but I would have knew that it works or it's my education. Yeah. That's so that's, that's that's the game. Course. So you don't have to own nothing. I, you just, just listen to the streets. And then if you have a little game behind you, hey, I'll take it. What are you always hitting for? Or you rent it out for two, can I Airbnb it at two? And if they say, oh, I don't know, say, you know what, I'll give you 2500 for it. Okay. And that, that's more than any tenant. So, and right. give me a, a, a three month lease and let's work. Or, hey, I'll split the profit with you. Like, whatever so. off top is the profit, me and you could become business partners. So, there's so many ways to talk about deals. Don't give them too much game. Man. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta I want to drop that ebook. Hey, that, you know, so. Because that's powerful, man. And, like you was telling me when, when we met yesterday, you, you got my brain working. Because, yeah, you know, I do the cars. So. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know that's that's uh, that's going very well. So you know, give me some. So so give me a little a little. So game the car on game is a little bit different. I mean, it's similar, um, but the goal is you know like you do Airbnb. So for cars, it's Turo. But the goal is once you get on the Turo platform, is to build your business and your clientele so you can be a hundred percent independent. Because uh, for example, I just had a rent uh, for my truck. And I think it was like three days, it was $550 I made, but 
I pocketed it like three ninety five. Oh, so, that's dope. So they, you know, they 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 get their cut, which yeah. is cool. They have different insurance packages, but you know, the, the most common one is like a seventy thirty. They take thirty percent. You keep seventy. Somebody crashes and dies or whatever in the car that you yeah. cover. You know. Okay. Um, God forbid. But cars. Um, I feel like it's a little bit easier to get into um, than real estate, but like we're saying, you know, earn double. Um, you take that car, you put it on the platform. Um, my for that that truck, the payment is four hundred ninety bucks. So it takes me two and a half days to make the truck payment. Wow. So I basically drive that truck for free. That's crazy. Um, and then everything after that is our profit. So I think um, as long as you get, I'm getting about 10, 10 days a month out of that, you know, that's that's about $1,300 that off those 10 days that I'm making profit. That's crazy. Yeah. So, woo, so, so not only, you know, that am I looking good when I want to, but it's not costing me nothing. It's free. That's cool. It's free money. That's crazy. Yeah. And they just, uh, I wanna, I was gonna look into Toro, so me and my buddy, I'm where my Airbnb is, I have a pop-up shop too. I'm trying to turn that, there's a little back lot. Okay. I'm trying to turn that whole little area into the- Let me get, to, that, let me get that back lot. Yeah, you so, that? hey, maybe, honestly, <laughs> in all honesty, we're, um, if you, if you, as long as you, my business partner is super, um, He's a classy dude. Okay. You know what I mean? And so he doesn't, you know, excuse my line, he don't he don't deal with no fuck shit. Not saying not implying that you, but he's okay, he, you're a classy dude too. Right. But uh if you can if, if you can come smooth, then I got I got I got the business partner of all business partners. Okay, yeah, man. We're gonna come with it, man. Yeah, so a billion dollars worth of cars in that back lot. Yeah, right? so I have I have a little back lot where you could you can make it nice and it's closed off to the world and somebody needs to come pick up a car. Yeah, I got the spot. But even as you guys listen, this is how deals are done. You start listening. Oh, you have a back lot, oh I have cars, and you can start putting together win win situations. So that's earning double. Not only is this his pop up shop, but he's gonna make more money off of it because he's gonna rent the back lot to me. Yeah. And I'm gonna put the cars there and I was you know and yeah. I'm gonna take care of him so it's and know, I get to learn about Toro and, and then I'm gonna throw you you know yeah. the weekend I'm gonna throw you a fly you want an S550 you know what I'm yeah saying? you want uh, whatever it is you want I got you bro I'm gonna let you ride for free too. so he gave me game he said uh if you know if you know I don't even know how to tell but he said I said what because I learned about Toro we was talking last night and he was like He's like, look, you don't even need to own the car. He's like, if you know somebody with a player whip, he's like, uh, hey, can I borrow your car? I'll give you $500 for a week. You know what I mean? Somebody be like, cool. And you throw that bad boy on Toro for the week and you might be able to double your money off of somebody else's car and drive it for one or two days yourself. This is a so, true story right here. I had a friend, um, he's a barber too. And uh, I guess he was getting a little over his head with his car payment. So. Um, you know, through the app and being able to rent the cars that I stepped to him, I told him, I said, hey man, you trying to get out of that car. I said, what if I gave you, uh, I said, how much is the payment? He said, oh, the payment is 600 bucks. I said, what if I gave you, you know, if I guarantee you I could cover that $600 a month for you. And then, you know, you don't have to worry about that car payment no more. And then you still be able to drive it, you know, here and now. He was like, well, how, how can I do that? I told him about it. You know, he went home, he told me he wasn't even able to sleep that night. Just you know, knowing that he would, be, it would be that easy to get the debt off his hands. So yeah. I said all that to say this: um, it doesn't have to be your car. It could be a friend's car. It could be your mom's car, coworker, whoever. Your car. You don't have to go out and pay cash for the car. You can finance the cars. Um, it's multiple ways to get into these businesses, just like you're saying. Yeah. But uh, peer to peer, peer to peer sharing is like a new way. Whether it's your house, Airbnb, yeah. Whether it's your car. You know, these are uh, platforms that are at a finger's touch that can help you earn double as well. Don't sleep on this internet thing. I like what he said. Don't sleep on, you know what I mean? If your man's got like like me and my girl, my girl wants a dope whip. I can't be, because of my driving record, I don't, I, I can't rent a car on Turo because I have oh, too many really? points. So I don't know if I could, the thing that kind of discouraged me from Turo was I don't know if I could lease cars on so, Turo. So this is what you, this is what you do. Uh, I got a friend, uh, I have a close friend that's yeah. in the same situation, and I just helped him, uh, me and my business partner, just helped him get his Turo going. Um, I'm not going to out him, but he had a situation where he got some a lot of points on his license, and he um, he got denied for renting on Turo. Yeah. But he posted his car on Turo. They let him do it, but they just simply said, hey, you know, they wrote him an email, hey, we'll let you post on the platform. Your car is available, but, you know, you can't drive your car. Uh, I mean, you can't rent a car. Yeah. So he can 
make money off the platform, but he can't use the platform. That's that crazy. That's what I would. I don't. I personally don't care. And the and you know my green light was. Uh, I went on Turo when it was when the pandemic. I can't remember. It was like Labor Day or something. It was a three day weekend. Uh, one of them were uh, Memorial Day or something. There was only one car left on. Cars is flying off the show. Yeah, so it's it's definitely there. I'm definitely gonna look into Turo. Uh, is there anything else? I think if after talking to T, you know what he does, you get a good idea. Uh, definitely follow his Instagram. He has a YouTube channel. Make sure you you check him out. Is there anything else you want to add to the wanna, tell the people? I want to tell everybody watching. Um, and this is very 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 important. This is free game. This this is this is almost important, uh, more important than anything he said or I said. You must, I don't care if you're a, a, a general contractor, I don't care if you work at McDonald's, I don't care if you if you sell cars for them, whatever you do, the avenue that you're taking, the avenue that you're doing, there's always another way to earn money from that same avenue. Via example, and I gave this, um, I gave this game in another one of my videos. All right, post post pandemic, right? All nail salons are shut down. Yeah. All right, so that's your main. I'm a nail tech, just say. Yeah. That's your main source of income. You do nails full time. Yeah. But guess what? Santa Clara County, state of California said all nail salons are closed. Yeah. So, all right, thinking outside the box. If I still wanted to, you know, do this full time, what would I do? Um, first things first, you would offer in home services. Yeah. But that's just doing the same thing as just doing nails. But how about if I do this? Let me go and buy a bunch of blank nails and create press on kits. Wow. Let me do the nail art. Wow. Let me package these and brand them. Wow. Let me post this on my social media. Game. Let me give these to all my clients. Game. Let me sell it to all the clients. Game. Let me you get the eyelash strips to go with it because I know Ooh. those places close too. Multiple streams of income. And let's sell this to everybody who can't get into a salon everyone in these other states who don't want to go to the salon because of the pandemic so just because i was a nail tech and if that's all i wanted to do was you know give you a set of nails then i'm limiting myself in my own industry to what i can physically um, do to earn way more money than i could behind that chair he just he just hit you i agree a thousand percent i think and then two i think you know i'll touch on this I'm creating a podcast. Why would somebody who has a shirt company have a podcast? Because it connects me with people. You guys already seen deals going down on the podcast. When the podcast hit, when the pandemic hit, I created a gang of content. I created entertaining content. I dropped podcasts. I did some uh, educational programs. I actually was fortunate to be able to do my fix and flip, which I could just go in the house, you know, for three months while the pandemic was going down. That was a great experience. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to just have my GC do it, but create if so for the same nail tech lady what i would add to his uh to t's thing is if you're while you're doing the press-ons teach ladies how to maintain their nails at home and then if you guys need help i have these press-on kits teach people how to uh how what to, to create the kits how to create their own kits teach people how to create their own eyelashes because from either doing the nails for people creating the kits for people or teaching people how to create kits you can still eat all through the pandemic but people just said oh my my um my nail salon's closed i'm not making money they just gave up so there's so many things but you can use the same thing for Turo, the same thing for airbnb the phone you could use that phone to just pull it out hey today i'm gonna give you a tip on how to keep your feet clean in the pandemic or what's the easiest way boom but if you don't want to do that i do have a nail set or if you want to create your own nail set, you know what I mean? Create content around it. This is how people know my brand. This is Absolutely. how people know me. And you create, T is a celebrity barber. What did he really use? He used his word of mouth, but content, content, content really got him there. Pictures, photos um, got him there. So don't sleep on creating content. Don't, and then anything you really want to know, anything we talked about, if you don't reach out, reach out to us. But YouTube University, how to create nail sets, how to brand a, uh, how to brand your logo, how to uh, uh, anything you can go to YouTube University. There's no excuses anymore. Free game. Free game. So uh, my name's JD. Uh, you can find me at partoftheculture.art 
or you could follow me on Instagram at part of the culture. It's spelled normal, one word, part of the culture. That's my brand. I've got a new book, 35 Lessons That I Learned by 35. Um, it has uh, how to increase your your health, wealth, love, and happiness uh, on part of the culture.art. If you send me a DM on Instagram, I'll send you my first two books for free, the ebooks. I have a business book and a book on investing. So I'll give you those completely free on Instagram. Y'all better get that, man. Make That's sure you guys. Game. Make sure you guys tap into T's class for all your barbers, those who need to do Faye, but I, 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 this was so much game. I'm not even going to release this. I'm not even going to release this. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, brother. And we out.